Hi guys, this is going to be the tutorial that's going to show you how to make this basket weave version number two. And to do the stitch, you can use any size hook and any size yarn. I used a worst weight yarn. I used worst weight yarn, which is four ply for the US, ten ply for Australia, and this is the kind I used. It's a lease. Um, the color is 3366 in case you want to try to order it. It's old so I don't know if you'll be able to find it. Uh, and also I'm using a 5 millimeter hook or a size 8 hook for the US. Uh, the multiples of the stitch can be done in multiples of 6 or multiples of 8. I like my basket weave stitch to be in sets of 3 so I'm going to do in sets of 6. If you like your basket weave to be in sets of 4 then you'll want to chain in sets of 8 but the multiples is 6 plus 3 or 8 plus 3 so the plus 3 is going to be the same for either one. So what the multiples 6 plus 3 means is that you're going to chain in multiples of 6, 6, 6, 6 until you've reached your desired width and then once you have you chain 3 and then you're ready to begin row 1 and it's going to be the same for the multiples of 8 plus 3. You'll just chain in sets of 8, 8, 8, 8, 8 until you've reached your desired width. Okay, so I have my multiples of six. I've reached my desired width. So I'm going to chain three more and I'm ready to begin row one. So for row one, it's the same for multiples of eight or multiples of six. You're going to put a double crochet in the third chain from the hook. So count one, two, three, and in this third chain, we're going to put a double crochet. This chain here that's left on the end will be the chain two that for row two that that'll be your last stitch. You'll need to do a double crochet in the top of the chain two. So I've done my first double crochet and now you want to go down the rest of your chain putting one double crochet in each stitch. So go ahead and put one double crochet down your chain one in each chain and I'll see you when you, when you get done with row one. Okay for row two you'll want to chain two and turn. For chain two, I mean for chain two, for row two um, and for all rows you're going to be working with the second post of the row, the first and last post which in this case will be the chain two. So your first and last stitch which one will always be a double crochet and the other one will always be a chain two. Those are going to be your what they call border row so your first and last stitch will always be just a just a double crochet. So you'll want to start your actual stitch on the second post of the row. So not the first, but the second one here and we're going to be working a front post double crochet. So yarn over and you want to go before the stitch and after, the space before and after the stitch to pull that that post forward and then you're going to pull a loop up through that post. Then do the double crochet as normal and you'll want to do that again for the next two stitches if you're working in sets of six or four stitches if you're working in the sets of eight. I'm working in multiples of six so I'm going to have three in a row. So once you have your front post double crochets finished then the next post will be back post. So you'll yarn over, you'll come up before the post and then you'll go into the next space pushing that post backwards. Again you'll yarn over, pull up a loop and then you'll do your double crochet as normal. Then you'll do that again coming from behind pushing back to do back post. And I'm doing three in a row. So now the next three for me will be front post. So going to go in and pull that post forward and do my front post. And then you're going to repeat the same pattern for the whole row. Three front post double crochet, then three back post double crochet. And continue that until your very last stitch which will be a chain two and in that chain two you want to work a double crochet. Okay, I'm working my double crochet in the top of my chain two here to in my row two. And that's the end of row two. For row three, 
you're going to chain two and turn. Now again, for this one, you're going to be you're going to be doing the opposite of what you did. Uh, if you watch my first basket weave stitch, you'll see that this is still the same. Um, for row three, you're going to be doing the opposite of what you did on row four. So here you can see that all of the posts are forward, and then this one you can see that it's back. It actually leaves a border where your stitches are kind of hiding behind it. So you, when you see that little border here, you know that these are back posts, and when you see that there's no border, it's all front, then that's a front post. So where you see these, you'll want to do a back post, and where you see these back posts here, you'll want to do a front post. Do the opposite of what is there. So since mine's front, I'm going to do three back posts, or do four back posts if you're working in sets of eight. And then my next three will be front posts. So you'll come back there, you'll push that, pull it forward, I should say, and do your front post. Pull those back posts forward. And that's two. And this is my third. And then my next three will be back post. So this is what you're going to repeat for this row. The opposite of everything you see. The front post, you'll need to work back post on them like I just did there. And these back posts here, I'm going to pull those forward and do front post. So repeat that down your row. And then double crochet in the ending chain two. Okay, I'm at the very end of my row and I'm double crocheting in my ending chain two. And that's the end of the first row re of repeats, by the way. You're going to be repeating rows three through six. So we just did row three. So for row four, you're going to chain two and turn. Now this is where things start to change a bit. Um, from now on, uh, when you after a chain after a row three, which is the one we just did, we're going to be doing the same thing for row four. So you you want it to be elongated, like let me show you here. See how you have the front post coming forward on two rows, and then you can see you have double borders for back post as well. So you'll have two rows of doing back post and then two rows of doing front post. So we're not going to do like we did the very first basket weave stitch that I showed you uh, in my basket weave, I guess I'm going to call it the basket weave stitch version one. So what we did in basket weave version one is that we changed every row. So for basket weave version three, we're going to be doing two rows of the same thing. So for row four, you're going to be continuing on the same thing as you did for row three. So as you can see here, it's a back post. So instead of saying, okay, it's a back post, so I'm going to do a front post this row, you're going to do the same thing as you did. It's going to be a repeat. You'll be repeating two rows in a row. So since our first three rows for row four, our first three stitches for row four are back post. For row four, we're going to continue to do back post. So we're going to do a back post again. So again, you want to repeat what's already there. So we have Front, three front posts, so we're going to do three front posts for this row two. Row three and four need to be a mirror of each other. So whatever you see, you need to do again. And this, of course, again, we have this little ridge here, so we know these are back posts, so we're going to do back posts on the back post. So keep continuing down the row mirroring what you see from row three until you get to the very last stitch which is a chain two and you just double crochet in that final chain two.
Okay, I'm just finishing up row four. I'm double crocheting in the top of my chain two. And that ends row four. And as you can see now, you're starting to get the double look. So we have two border rows here, what I'm gonna call border rows that run, and then the front post. So that, that's what three and four look like. Now, five and six is gonna be the same, except of course you're gonna have two rows of front post where your back post is and two your next two rows will be back post so that it looks more like a weave. For row five and for all rows you will always chain two at the beginning and turn. That's going to be the same because you have your border stitches. So, Okay so again we're working in the second post of the row. We have our two rows of back post because you can see by our border here and these border here, border here. So now we're going to do our front post where our back posts are for this row. And then where we have our front post here, we're going to be doing back post. So we're going to push those backwards. And this is going to be your repeat of this row come across the back post, you'll do front post, and when you come to front post, you'll do back post. So keep continuing this down your row, and when you get to the end of your row, chain two, you'll do a double crochet. Okay, and the very last chain two of the row, on that one, two, you'll do a double crochet. Sorry about that buzzing sound outside, sounds like it's a... a what do they call them? Uh, I don't want to call them a wind blower, but you know those blowers where they blow the leaves. Okay, so that was row five. So five and six are going to be a repeat, just like three and four was. Five and six are going to be the same. So again, you're going to chain two. So for row six, we're going to mimic row five, just like we did for row four. Uh, we mimicked row three. The repeat is three and four, and then four and five. You're going to repeat those over and over again. Again, sorry for that sound. It's getting worse. Okay, so here we have front post, so we're just going to mimic that for row six. We'll mimic what we see from row five. So since the first three are front post, then we're going to repeat that by doing front post. The next three here are back post, so we're going to repeat, mimic that and do back post. So in the next three are front, the next three are back, you're just going to continue to mimic what you see from the previous row and I'll see you when you get to the end of the row. Oh, sorry, I was trying to wait for this guy to get done with his buzzing outside but he doesn't seem to want to stop. Um, so I got to the very end of the row. I just repeated what was there already and as you can see what I was talking about before you, It's kind of a basket weave look now You'll have your front post kind of going in diagonal and then you'll have your back post going in diagonal So now we're on our repeat. We just completed rows three and four and Five and six so now it's going to be a repeat of row three So again, you're going to chain two and turn and now you're going to be starting off uh, doing the opposite so for row three, you will do a back post wherever that you see a front post, like on these first three, for instance. And then the next three are back posts, so we're going to push them forward and to make them a front post. And you'll want to continue to do this down your row, repeating row three. From, this is exactly, so if you want to back up and, and uh, go back to row three, you can. Um, so this is row three, and then when you chain two and turn, remember for row four, you're going to be mimicking whatever you just, you just did for row three. And then you're just going to continue like that again and again. So that's it guys. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please don't forget to like and share and comment on this video. It helps me out so much. Also, if uh, you want to keep checking out the basket weave thing that I'm doing, version 1, 2, and 3, or any future tutorial, 
you can go on my main YouTube page and right next to the subscribe button there's a little bell button if you click that it will always notify you whenever I release a new video uh, if you wanted to know what kind of hook that I'm using I'm using a wooden furls hook you can find that link down below my video and if you're going to order this wooden furls hook I recommend you order it with an extended hook if not you're only going to it's only going to come half the size also I have a group on Facebook called crochet for the masses you can go there to share free pattern links, uh, pictures of your projects that you're doing, um, also to ask questions if you're stuck on a pattern. It's a really nice place to, um, you know, have help and share for those who really like crochet. So I really hope I see you there. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching.